Hi right, guys, in this video I'm going to take this power brick apart. I hope. <laughs> now, I've already gotten a head. There's these two spikes here, which I've loosened off. And I'm going to take those off just to get the spikes out of the way and so I don't stab myself on them or just so I don't get a um, injury from them because that wouldn't be very pleasant. I think they're just like um, guide spikes to help guide it in straight so you don't bend the um, pins in the socket. But I'm not going to be needing those so they can go in the bin. Now, I do need a Phillips screwdriver. Here's one I got earlier. <laughs> Um, there is some screws in here. These, I can't remember if I've got to take these out or not, but they will be taken out at some point anyway, so let's just uh, these two in the top here. Take those out. And if we flip it over, there's another two in the bottom. Which again, I'm going to take out now. I don't, if I remember correctly, I don't need to, but they have to come out anyway. And to be honest, it's a lot easier to pull these out now when I've got the sides all on, rather than when um, the cover's off and I've got to try and get hold of sharp circuit boards and. It's just easier to do it this way. Now, while I've got this upside down, there's one tab here that you push down on. Actually, I think that one is already pushed. Yeah, them two are already pushed down. But, I'll just put them back there for a second. Flip this back over. There's another two. This end, so. I think this is the one I've actually taken apart before, because these tabs are pushed down. And then all you do, you get a screwdriver or something similar in there and just leave it open. And these, this cover will uh, completely slide off. As simple as that. Just like that. Now, one thing I did notice on the back of these is this little switch here. You can actually... Um, Turn it on and off. There's this tiny little switch. You would need, I don't know, like a little flathead screwdriver to hit it because it's designed to sit behind the cage at the back. Because there's a cage on here. Same sort of thing as uh, on this end. And it just sits just behind it so you can't accidentally knock the switch. Anyway. That's, that's why I forgot to do this. I thought I was so prepared. Anyway, it's only just in the other room, so what we've got, we've got a big screw here, and we've got a big screw there that just holds these big bunches of wires. I'm not sure what these red ones are for. Now, usually it indicates live, but I'm guessing in this case it isn't. In this case, ah, oh, sorry, bad joke. <laughs> We've got a bunch of black here, which is connected to uh, that one. I'm not 100% certain what that's for, but um, I'll just put you there for a minute and I'll go and get my um, little toolkit I need with the star keys in. And my screwdriver, that would be good. My fault because I had a bit of a tidy up and I thought I was done with it and uh, I forgot to bring this back to do this specific job. Now if I remember correctly they are T10s. I think. Let me just check. Oh that one's actually a Phillips screw. Oh. Well that's different. I should have actually looked in here before I went and got this but they're Phillips screws, they're not stars. All I've got to do is remove 
these. Uh, and there's one screw here, so there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's one between these two caps. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, start removing some screws. Oh, actually, one thing I will do now while I remember. So I'll pull the two Molex connectors off the board and the ATX connector. And that's what that's called. Something like that. And I may need. I'm going to need a different Phillips to this one. Two seconds. I'm glad my toolbox is just behind me. So, let's get these wires moved, or removed, I should say, not moved. I've got to remember. I'm not sure because they both connect to the um, heat sink, so it's like there's a complete circuit there. I'm not 100% <laughs> certain what these bunches of wires do. I'll take those out. So that's our wires disconnected from this board out of the way. So, in theory, can you see it? Not inside, but you can see. Is this screwdriver magnetic? No, it is not. Is this one? No. Nope. I know what one is. Let's try it with this one. I can't use this one because the tips aren't big enough to... Uh... Well, it wasn't magnetic. Oh, well, I'm going to leave the screw in there then, sort of. Oh, that one's magnetic. That must just be a stuck screw then. Hmm. All right. Another one. Make sure I'm not missing any. Was it two up the top? Three up the top there. Oh, I missed one. There's one underneath the bundle of red wires I just removed. No wonder I couldn't see it. This one it's screwed together really well. This is quite a well manufactured unit. I will give it that. Um, and as we saw in other videos, there are Nippon Chemicon capacitors on this, so I didn't skimp on the quality there. The only reason I know that is because I watch a lot of electronics videos and I have learned a lot. And what's good quality? Well, what's a good quality name and what isn't? And I know Nippon Chemicon is one of them. I just think the chances of any caps being bad on here is a uh, Now I think I've got them all. So in theory, I'm just going to double check. No, I have missed one. Top corner. In theory, I should be able to get hold of this board. And wiggle it out. There's one. Lay that there. Now, this should give me a bit of wiggling room. No. Nope. I've got another connector on this board to pull off. And then hopefully. Oh yeah, that might help. The case is naturally earth, being metal, so down the bottom here, there is an earth wire that goes straight to the um, power socket. So this whole chassis is uh, rounded, as it should be. There we go. And that just pulls out as well. And uh, what I will do, I will remove that board from the metal chassis in a minute. But, um, oh. Um, a bit of plastic. I'm not sure where that comes from. Seems to be a wire from somewhere as well. I've got weird things falling out of this one. <laughs> right. Now, the big old connector. 
It's just as simple as taking that screw out and one out the other side. So, I'll do that now, then I can get the chassis out of the way completely. You don't actually need to remove the second screw completely, you only really need to remove the one. Remove one completely and loosen one off, and that will allow you to slide the um, connector block off. So there we go, see I left that screw in. So you don't have to take both out. There we go, that's the chassis done with. Now, this board is fairly heavy because it's got, naturally, I've got hooked up, hang on. Because, um, and actually they've got this between each circuit board. This goes between the metal chassis plate and the circuit board. Uh, is most likely for insulation purposes because you don't want this board shorten out on the um, metal chassis, do you? That will cause all sorts of fireworks. Right. It's just the same principle with um, this board. I'm going to try and try and get you a better view. Move back a bit so I can get a bit more in. That's my zoom, you know, I just move the camera. <laughs> right. Well, I'll start with this one right at the front. The only reason I'm going to take it off the um, chassis plate is because uh, it'll make the board a heck of a lot lighter. That's quite a heavy, rigid plate. Actually, a lot of the metal I've taken off the server has actually been quite heavy. So I'm I'm guessing they used quite a high grade steel. I think it's steel. It's magnetic anyway. And um, they definitely didn't skimp on expenses. It's probably why it lasted up until whenever this was decommissioned from its job. For whatever reason, I don't know if it did actually fail. It looked like it did fail because, as I said, on one of the boards there was a couple of um, chips that had corrosion around the contact. So I bet if I troubleshooted it properly, I could have got it going again. Stupid metal bracket on there. I'll get that off. No, on this one. I have missed one. That's why it won't come off because I've missed one. I do it every time. I guarantee I will miss one, no matter what I'm taking apart. I'm guessing that's just to add some support to this. Yeah, because that's rather flimsy. So of course, when you put this in, I'm just going to re readjust the camera. Hang on a minute. Straighten my legs up. What I hate about flexible legs. I prefer the one I had with the ball joint. I'm guessing this is just to uh, add strength to the power socket because that's quite flimsy. But if I'm actually right, when we slide this on, and that all gets put in place, and I've got to imagine that will be screwed to the chassis plate and to the board, so that'll be quite uh, rigid when that's done. Not a bad idea. So it was on the plug connector braking. Clang. Here we are. Just another insulator. And it's as simple as that to take these apart. Now, I would actually say, even if you could get hold of one of these cheapest chips, even just a power supply, some good source of some various caps. Actually, there's lots of parts on here I suppose you could salvage, including cobwebs. <laughs> cobwebs in there. No, I wouldn't know what these are myself, not without going on Google and uh, Googling the numbers. It's exactly the same as the other one. But, uh, yeah. 
one set of these boards I'm going to um, take apart for parts which is probably the other set I've got which is in the bedroom at the moment these ones I think I'll keep so if I want a random power, big ass power supply for something I've got the boards to um, put in however way I so wish screw still in there bugger off keep hold of this as well really what I need to do is plug this in and probe all of those to see what voltage comes out of what I'm going to guess as the red ones are actually the thickest that that's probably um, the highest voltage because they are thicker than the rest But I'm still not sure why. There's just a random bundle there and there <laughs> that seem to join together on this heat sink. See? There and there. I'm not 100% sure why. But they must take some sort of fairly high current because they are fairly beefy wires. I think they're all the same grade from the look of it. Um, 105 degrees centigrade, 300, I think that's a W, so I think it's 300 watt. Doesn't actually give you the um, voltage rating of it. Oh, no, that's a V, 300 volt. It's my eyes playing tricks. So, yeah, that is quite beefy wire there. Does it give you the current or just the volts? Nope. Just the temperature. It's got FT1 written on it. I would actually say that's probably 2.5 mil size. What grade that would be in US measurements I haven't got clear. Let's just have a look at these. So I think I've actually found where my um, power for the fans will come from. <laughs> 14 AWG. Does that make that 14 grade? I don't know. Someone help. <laughs> yeah, it's exactly the same as these. So... In theory, the thicker wires would be the higher voltage carriers. Which means all these dinky little wires would be the ones that carry the lower voltage and the lower current. That's all orange and yellow. There's no black on that. Probably, I think this has got a 3 volt row. It's almost like a standard PC power supply, apart from it does kick out almost 50 volts as well. I think it's 48 volts. Just gonna have a quick check on the on the sticker. How do you know? I think that's 40. See the uh, my magnifying glass isn't handy either. At hand, I should say, not handy. And, um, it's either a 40 or a 48 on there, I can't <laughs> see. But that is the highest rated voltage on there. It's got minus 12, or 12.12, 12. 5.10, 3.35. Oh, pardon me. You know, you could actually make one heck of a um, bench power supply out of one of these. Um, it's only 16 amps on the 40 volt row. There's a 15 volt line which is only rated at 800 milliamps. There's a 5.1 at 3.4 amps. 3.35, 1.3 amps. There's another actually 3.35 at the top. 
top there of the list that actually says 100 and 166 amps. Hell, that would hurt. That's such a low, might only be a low voltage, but that would still hurt. Yeah, I don't fancy um, getting a shock off this thing. That would hurt. That might be low voltage, but the amps are still quite high on a lot of the rails, so... Uh, Play around with one of these at your own peril. And I wouldn't recommend it unless you actually know what you're doing. Um, but obviously the other one that I'll, I intend to actually use for things um, will stay in its case. In fact, I suppose, as I haven't damaged anything, I could have a go at putting this back together. And keep two of them in the cases. Now, I'm not going to do that on video though, but that's something I might do another day or later on. So, we've torn apart one of these um, HP server power supplies. I really must jot down the number, model number, so I can Google it again. I'd love to get these big capacitors off these, uh, just to have a play. <laughs> what are they rated at? 105 degrees. Can't see a voltage. There'll be a voltage on here somewhere. It's on my side. 450 volt. I knew it'd be there somewhere. Cool. I could throw a punch, couldn't I? Anyway, thanks a lot for watching. If you liked the video, don't forget to hit the thumbs up button. And uh, any questions or comments or anything, leave them in the comment section below. And uh, don't forget to subscribe for more videos. And uh, I'll talk to you again soon. Bye.